Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PQ.com. Uh, it's time for step six of the getting started guide. Uh, covered installing package library, all the prerequisites. Uh, now we're gonna go into, I think where the real power comes from and that is building your custom packages. Our library, we can't provide everything just because there's uh, user agreements where sometimes we can't provide the install media and there's, or there's various things, things like Office 365 where there's a lot of customization that goes into that. So this is where you can come in and build your own and you can still get the automation and the install from our product, but you have more control than we can offer uh, just kind of a default option. Uh, so to get started, we're just gonna come in here and click on new package. And I mean, we're done, right? Uh, we'll, we'll dive into it. So we're gonna do this one. We're gonna show smart deploy because this is clever marketing within a video. Uh, smart deploy is great for imaging, I check it out. Uh, and that's it, the name for this one. You can go through description. You can put a version if you have a version of your software. Uh, you can have custom variables where if you have version update everywhere, instead of having to do multiple locations, you could just set it so it does it in one. And then just this is where you put all your information for that one. Next, we have your conditions. These are uh, requirements basically for it to run, where you have your OS version. If this software only goes on Windows 10, uh, or it only works on Windows 8. You can set that there. The architecture, I think, is pretty clear. PowerShell version. I love that one just because PowerShell is great. Uh, I think anything at this point should have five uh, by default. And may maybe not all of them, but I think five is safe. But anyway, you can specify a version there. And then you can specify uh, to run only if no one is logged in or if, you, or if user is logged in, even including disconnected. So there's just a lot of parameters you could put in there. And this last one uh, is basically you can take a look at, we're looking for if there's a specific file or there's a registry key or they're a member of a certain collection. You can specify all that there. So all of this means when you go to install the software, all these important details are exactly within the parameters you uh, look for. And if not, it'll say, hey, we didn't run because it doesn't meet this requirement. It will help you uh, get that uh, all squared away to install. Uh, the next one is the options. Uh, I mean, copy mode. Push or pull, that's pretty common. It pushes the default, but you can always change that. Uh, scan after deployment, this is after you install, do you want your PDQ inventory to update automatically with all the latest information? I think that one, I default, I don't really touch that one. Uh, run as, this one has a whole bunch of power. Uh, deploy user is the default, and that's basically gonna be your credentials, so it's safe bet that's some sort of administrative credential. But sometimes uh, you got local system or logged on user, or deploy user interactive, if there's a, you can't get by a pop-up, this will make it interactive so they can interact with that and move it on. Uh, local system is pretty self-explanatory. Logged on user runs as local system that then elevates or it impersonates uh, lo uh, logged on user. So the logged on user has some admin credentials. It makes it so you can do a local install or uninstall in this case, say they're installing Firefox on their user data folder. That's where you, you would just specify that one. And then offline settings, this is things like a ping to make sure it's on before you run. Uh, there's a retry queue, but I'd recommend doing something based on a schedule and a heartbeat. A retry queue is kind of outdated, but it is there if you want it to retry a certain number of times. And that's all those steps. And the next one we're going to come into, these are the type of instep, uh, install steps you can do. First one is install. This is your MSI EXEs. You can run VB scripts. Uh, I think there's a whole lot you could do. Uh, I think uh, registry modifications if uh, you have that kind of file. Uh, the next one is command prompt. Pretty self-explanatory. PowerShell, so much power in PowerShell, I love it. Especially if you combine PowerShell with logged on user. I'm not supposed to go into that kind of detail, but that's just something particularly that I love a lot. A nested package, this is where you can build one parent package to add all your different packages. So say you have a baseline, new computer logs onto the environment, it's gonna install all the software it needs with just that one package. File copy is basically just X copy. Uh, same thing, new wrapper. Uh, scan, this is if you have a particular scanner where you're looking for a specific file or anything like that. This will, between those steps, you can do a scan and it will go through and update inventory. And so if it's based on a certain collection, you can make sure in the mid process it is moving down cr properly. Uh, or you can, I mean, scan after is already done, but this is kind of scan in the middle. Uh, reboot and sleep, those are pretty self-explanatory. Same with log off. And then message will just pop up a box that you can send to your user. And that's pretty much it. There's a lot in there. I kind of briefly touched on a lot of different parts, but the the power behind this is significant. You can do a whole lot. 
Uh, I guess I'll dive in a little bit of detail with the install step, just because that's probably the most commonly used one. Uh, install file this is where you put whatever it is. If it is an MSI, those silent parameters are already known, so we'll put that in for you. If it's an EXE, you're going to want to supply uh, the silent parameters wh wherever you can find it. So the documentation for the website, you could, should be able to supply that. And then if you're looking for a particular code that we're not accounting for here, you could add code one, one, two, three, four, five there. And then if it finds that code there, it will come back as a success instead of a failure. So if there's a unexpected code, but you know it's still installed with that code, you can add that for a little bit of just extra, making sure it's working fine for you. And then other than that, the conditions are basically the same. This is the step level instead of package level, but it's the same kind of settings. So if you will start off and you have a certain parameter and then for each step you need slightly different parameters, you can define those in each step as well, give you a little bit more granularity. And that's that's pretty much it. That is uh, it's an extremely powerful tool. Uh, I, I'd say, fair guess, that's why I bought the product and uh, you're not gonna regret it, it's pretty great. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.